The thing to remember here is that we're all in this together. Creators against the people who are looking to badmouth us, against the people who are looking to take advantage of us, exploit us. And the only way they win is when we don't talk. So many of you saw my recent video covering the collapse of the Defy Media MCN and how the closure of that business ultimately resulted in 50 independent channel creators having $1.7 million of their earnings just stolen from them. And mind you, when I say $1.7 million, that's actually a lowball of what's collectively owed to this group of people. But regardless of the final amount, the moral of the story was this, that that money our channel's rightful earnings sent to us by YouTube now resides trapped in a bank account with a big old Defy label slapped onto it. Ally Bank is now holding onto that money, waiting for it to be parceled out to all the people that Defy owed debts to. They're treating it like Defy's money when it's actually ours. At the end of the video, I asked you for help simply by spreading the message, raising awareness of the issues that we found ourselves in, and you did. You answered the call in force. Which, first off, thank you so much for making it to the end of that really long video, but also thank you for signal boosting. People like Phil DeFranco, Felix, Tricycle, Gamer from Mars, Optimus, Venture Addicts, not Venture Beat, I keep wanting to say Venture Beat, but it's Venture Addicts, Tipster, all of you did, you shared your own MCN horror stories, Thank you so much for finally helping to air the dirty laundry of this industry that's been taking advantage of people for far too long. And it wasn't just here on YouTube either. The Verge, Daily Dot, Josh Cohen at Tube Filter, all of you helped to signal boost our story. A story that, quite frankly, YouTube's trending tab was a bit too scared to touch. And I cannot thank all of you enough, because after months of silence, since the day that Defy closed, we finally got a response from someone who's wrapped up in this whole mess. We got a response from Ally Bank. But hold off on your party poppers, friends, because the response we got was not quite what we were looking for. Let me share a couple tidbits. Quote, Ally made a loan to Defy Media that it was unable to pay back after experiencing excessive losses and the owners refused to continue to support the company. Defy is being liquidated by a professional hired by their board of directors and Ally stands to lose most of its loan. We are sympathetic to everyone caught up in this mess and unfortunately Ally is also experiencing a substantial loss as a result. Mm. So sorry for your loss, Ally. Thoughts and prayers. This, ladies and gentlemen, is not a response. It's a Jedi mind trick. It's a misdirect. It's a tactic called false equivalence. Basically, sleight of hand that tries to convince you that two things are equal that, when you step back and actually look at it, aren't at all. In this case, we have Ally Bank, a company who in 2017 had revenues of $9.8 billion, trying to say that it's a victim of Defy Media's closure in the same way that we, YouTubers who film in our closets, are victims of Defy Media's closure. That the money that they stand to lose is equivalent to the money that we earned had sent to us by way of Defy and now remains trapped in Defy's bank accounts. That money is not the same, Ally, and I think you know that. But in case you don't, because I understand digital video is a complicated business, let me explain it to you in the way that we like to do things on this channel, geeky references and pop culture analogies. Let's talk about banks, shall we? Now, don't worry, don't click off this video. I'm gonna try to make this as interesting as possible, but do you have a bank account? Have you ever stopped to consider how banks make money? Honestly, it's something I never gave second thought to until having to do this video, and now that I've thought about it, banks actually have a sweet deal in place. You see, we all deposit our money into a bank for safekeeping and to earn little increments of interest, but the banks then take our money and loan it out to other people, other businesses, whatever, and charge higher interest rates. That is how the bank is making money. And loans are cool. That's all fine and dandy. It enables people to get houses or expand their businesses. It's very awesome. Except it's easy to forget two facts. First off, that what the bank is doing is earning money off of our money by taking our money and just giving it to other people. It's kind of a weird concept. But secondly, that the bank has the ability to choose who they give a loan to and who they reject the loan application from. Which means that at some point, Ally Bank chose to make a commercial loan to Defy Media. Now, how much was that loan for? Unclear. How much was paid back before Defy closed? Not sure, but none of it matters because at its core, a loan is a risk. 
It is a gamble. It is the expectation that whoever the person is loaning the money to will pay back that loan as well as interest. It is a business risk, an investment. If I go to Vegas and start putting bets on blackjack, sure, I'm hoping to get good cards and earn more money. But if I lose, when I lose, because I am terrible at anything related to Vegas outside of the buffets, I have no reason to complain because I knowingly made the bet with the hopes of higher returns. That is the inherent risk with any high return investment. And it isn't like losing these sorts of bets should come as some big surprise to you, Ally, because between 2006 and 2015, over 17% of small business loans ended up going into default. They didn't end up getting paid back. That was a known risk. That is what you do. So when you decided to give a loan to Defy Media, you stepped up to the blackjack table and you put your money on 20 and the dealer pulled a 21. You lost. I'm sorry, it sucks, but it's true. That's the game. Us creators, meanwhile, we're not playing blackjack. Heck, we're not even in the casino. We're down the street at the ATM, except all of a sudden the ATM suddenly changes locations, changes names, runs out of bills, then decides not to pay us, but continues to deduct the money from our accounts. That $1.7 million that us creators are owed are our paychecks. And they're not even paychecks from Defy Media. Their paychecks sent to us from YouTube through Defy to us. You see why there's a difference here, Ally? And do you see why it might be offensive to us that you're trying to loop your victimhood, your bad business decisions, into us and our losses? You know how when you apply for a loan, the bank's totally like, ah, no need to show proof of income, you're probably fine. Here's all that money you requested. No. No, of course they don't do that. That would be stupid. They ask to see your pay stubs. They ask to see your credit history, your bank accounts, your firstborn child, your dental history, and that awkward photo of you from when you were in middle school. They want to make sure in every sense possible that you are the type of person or the business who will be able to pay back on their loan, who won't go into default and end up costing them money. The same thing happens when a bank is deciding to make a commercial loan. They are allowed to and supposed to go through a process called due diligence. Basically, an investigation into the inner workings of a business to see just how healthy that business really is. Ally outright hires people to do this job, to go through all the boring little minutia of businesses that they're thinking of investing money into. All the cash flow statements, the valuation, the balance sheets, the year-over-year -year profit and loss statements. So even if Ally was impressed with the amount of money that was flowing into Defy's books every month, they should have also seen through this process of due diligence that it was flowing right back out to us and all the other dozens of creators in the network. Same time every month, month after month after month. Shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. And if anyone, anyone had the ability to come across the shady dealings that Defy was doing, it should have been a company with access to their financial records and who had every right to ask questions if and when the numbers didn't quite add up. That is a luxury that us creators never had. In fact, my for now anonymous contact who used to work at Defy told me that he was outright told to lie to partners about their financial situation. So again, Ally, not quite the same situation we find ourselves in. On one hand, you have a company who had access to numbers and books and expense reports. And on the other hand, you have us, the creators, whose only contact with the company were people whose jobs depended on outright lying to us. And lastly, Ally, in their response, makes it seem like every Everything from this point forward is out of their hands. They mention this professional who's going to be hired on by Defy's board of directors to parse out where Defy's remaining money goes to. But let's talk for a minute about boards of directors and who actually sits on them. You see, in movies, it's always the CEO who's the hot shot at the top, making all the big decisions, hiring and firing people, and, you know, just overall being a greedy son of a gun. But in real life, a board of directors has a lot of power, if not more than the CEO. In fact, they could just vote to oust the CEO if they choose to. A board of directors works kind of like this. Say, for instance, I find a really good soap company. And so I go up to the owner of that soap company and I'm like, man, the world really needs to experience your amazing soap. And then they're going to take it onto YouTube and they're going to cut the soap and they're going to run it over with cars and they're going to put it through hydraulic presses. The world is going to be so excited about your soap. So I give the owner of the company money in order to expand his business. But before I do, I also say that in order to get my money, I demand a seat on their board of directors. 
what that allows me to do is be in a position where I can supervise how my investment is being used, so that way when I give them the money, the soap owner doesn't just go off and buy a Lambo and then start flexing on YouTube showing off his new car or something like that. That is what a board of directors does. And traditionally, a board of directors is comprised of inside directors and outside directors. Inside directors are people who actually work at the company. The CEO, the vice president, the soap founder in the first place. And then outside directors would be people like me. People with other experiences or other funding sources who can come in and help guide and shape and grow the business. And while I am sure that you are super interested in boards of directors and my hypothetical YouTube soap business, here's the reason I bring it all up. Outside directors also tend to be people who have significant financial investment in the company. People who have lent that business large sums of money. Given that Ally apparently made such a substantial loan to Defy, there's a high likelihood that they have at least one seat on that board of directors. The people who are outright choosing the professional who decides how Defy's assets get liquidated and parceled out. And who do you think that person is going to prioritize in making whole? The big company who had a hand in helping them get the job in the first place? Or a bunch of nameless, faceless creators? Let me be clear. In a perfect world, everyone who was wronged by Defy would have the ability to get their money back in totality. Us creators, the creditors, the employees whose jobs went up in smoke, and yes, even large institutions like you, Ally, deserve fairness and justice. I'm not saying that you don't, but let's be realistic. It's not going to happen. Certain people are going to have to get prioritized over others, and we've heard that story time and time again. Big business does shady business dealing, and it's the little guy who's left holding the bag. The bankruptcy gets ignored, the lawsuit gets dropped, the bank gets bailed out, and it's the little guy who loses. It sucks to have to compare who was more victimized by a corrupt business, but guess what? That's what the professional hired by Defy's board of directors is going to have to decide. And so I am here on this couch today to remind him of three things. One, that the creator income that sits in Defy's bank accounts was never Defy's to begin with. And that the investment that Ally lost was part of a loan that went bad. It was a calculated risk on your part. Two, that Ally had a chance to double check their work, go through a process of due diligence to ensure that Defy was a sound investment, a luxury and privilege that us creators never had. And three, that Ally may have more of a hand in deciding the professional who ends up liquidating Defy's assets and thereby deciding where that money goes. I get it. You have a right to be angry, Ally. I am too. You have a right to want your money back. But don't you for a second say that your situation is the same as ours. And if it does end up being that you get your money back before us creators, just remember where that money's coming from. Because at this point, you know where it's coming from. You know that it's coming out of the pockets of small business owners. You will, in accepting that money, be clawing back your bad investment losses out of the pockets of people who you supposedly represent. And if you are comfortable with that, I do hope you consider changing your motto, 8,000 allies all looking out for one thing, you. Just saying. In the aftermath of the last Defy video, I've gotten tons of requests to cover all sorts of different topics, MCN related and otherwise. Stuff like, can you still get all the perks of being in an MCN without actually signing into one? What other shady things were happening behind the scenes at Defy? Don't worry, friends. I've got videos coming up on all those sorts of different topics because guess what? I think it's important to cover them. So strap in, ladies and gentlemen. There's more to come.